Let's pull up this story here from uh, TimCast.com. Senator Lindsey Graham proposes nationwide 15-week abortion ban. Graham said the legislation is comparable to abortion regulations in 47 European countries. The Republicans don't have the Senate, the House, or the executive branch, so there's no point in introducing this bill other than to virtue signal or sabotage the Republicans right before the midterm election. Mm. I mean, you can argue that maybe he's like, look, we're going to do this. If you vote for us, we will do this because that will rally not just Democrats, but also Republicans. But Republicans are already angry. They're already ready to vote out Democrats. Democrats are the ones who need to be riled up. So it seems like Lindsey Graham is just sabotaging the Republicans. I think he's an insulated guy, like he's insulated in his, his, you know, echo chamber and thinks that he's doing moral good by his, what he believes, that he really believes and wants that. I, I don't, I don't agree with you. He's an establishment neocon that has been always toting the line of the party establishment, no matter what it is. And he always is on the tip of the sphere when it comes to pushing this larger agenda that screws everyone else over. It wouldn't surprise me if this was a bigger play to screw over, uh, you know, the big part of the Republican Party that is set to allegedly win in this upcoming election. You look at how, you know, the abortion ruling by the Supreme Court mobilized a whole bunch of activists, a whole bunch of people to get active inside of democratic states and cities all throughout the United States. Why bring up this issue when, of course, this is only showing the enemy your move, even if it's that? But I don't think it's that. I, I think it's what Tim is asserting it is. And I think this is a deliberate action to shoot in the foot the kind of populist uprising that he wants to quell. So he, you think he, he wants Trump or any Republican to fail so that the, un, the liberal economic order can seize control? And so he's just shoving a nail in it with this? Well, this is going to mobilize, I think, a lot of people. And I think if you look at his voting record, it's always been not just, you know, Republican uh, or, or Democratic. It's always been pro-establishment, pro-ruling party, pro-billionaire class, pro-World Economic Forum. He has always voted along those particular lines. So it wouldn't surprise me if he's now intervening as many people like Joe Rogan are telling people to go vote Republican. And I think this is going to have an effect on it. It's, Sabotage. I think you're right on that. Yeah, I think to think right. that someone would sabotage their own political party is very, very weird. But he's not he's, really, he's not aligned with he, the populist Republicans. Hmm. He's aligned with, with neo the Democrats. He's yeah. had a history of that. I mean, look at uh, Liz Cheney. I mean, she's a Republican. She was, uh, is there anybody that has uh, sabotaged the, the MAGA movement more or tried to sabotage the MAGA movement more than her? I mean, I, I think he is an establishment guy that tends to go along like McCain did with uh, the Democrats uh, on certain kinds of issues. And this just doesn't make any sense. It goes against the entire argument for Roe v. Wade and getting rid of it was to give this off to the states and allow states to make up their own mind on this. That was the argument from the right. And now he's completely usurping that. He's saying, no, we actually want more than that. And to do this right now before an election, I mean, d does he have some kind of polling numbers that say something different? I don't know. I think we saw what happened in Kansas when they put it on the bill. They put an amendment. Uh, I think it was Kansas. Was it? Yeah, it was Kansas. Where they put a the, the abortion bill on their amendment and it ended up getting vote, voted down, resoundingly voted down. He's up in Democrats. That's simple. 100%. Because now every single Democrat is going to have campaign ads saying, Senator Lindsey Graham wants a nationwide abortion ban. And they got it. I guess if you, if like cultural military, you know, war gaming here, if you had a country and there was a, a revolt in one of your cities and you couldn't get the re the rebels out of your city, that you would scorched earth the city and burn it all down, even though it's your city. So if he's afraid that the MAGA have taken over the Republican Party, that he would sabotage the Republican Party. That's not out of the realm of possibility. No, it's not. And if they if they do not have the red wave that so many on the right are hoping for, what does that say? Who, who ends up benefiting from that? I think it ends up being, you know, I think Trump ends up not benefiting from that. And the establishment Republicans, they like they've done with illegal immigration for years. They misrepresent or they misinterpret a, a, an election outcome to benefit their own positions. And they've done it with illegal immigration in the past where where somebody would lose and they'd say, oh, okay, that was because they took a hard line against illegal immigration. We need to go amnesty the way that the, the left is doing. And, and Lindsay is a perfect example of, of somebody that's 
completely yeah. bought into the establishment. Lindsay is also really good friends with Joe Biden, and again said that Joe Biden is a good man, as quote as God has ever created. So he's been very anti-Trump, very anti-populist, very pro uh, John McCain, neocon, neoconservative, trying to start foreign wars every chance, every instance he gets. So he's definitely not working in the interest of the American people. He's working towards the interest of the military industrial complex and the ruling party since, you know, the connection with uh, Biden is very clear with him and, uh, you know, Biden being in the Senate, you know, for 720 years now, uh, they had a very long, cozy relationship. Yeah, he was in the Roman Senate. Yep. It's true, That's yeah. Right. It seems like... <laughs> I, I wonder if Lindsay was bullied when he was a kid because it kind of feels like this is what someone that's like the target of being bullied grows up and then they get power and now then they become a bully. Yeah. What's the problem with bullying, man? Well, he's just an evil guy. Hmm. You know, just evil. Man, you know, in my younger days, I did not believe in good and evil. I was just like, no, I think it's, it's you know, people are trying their best, but they just disagree on how you go about things. And then you get into, you know, an industry industry like this. You're like, oh, no, they're evil. They're, huh. like, they're literally just evil. The crazy thing is when people believe they're doing good because, like, everybody thinks they're the hero in their own story. Mm. So when people believe they're doing good while they're doing evil acts, it's really but crazy. That's, but, but, I, but I think mm, some of them are just evil. So, like, they, they, I used to think that. I used to think everybody was the hero of their own story. And then I was like, wow. And they start to realize, no, some people are evil. Some of them are just like, how much collateral damage can we sustain to they get our accomplishment? They told me this at Occupy Wall Street. They said, don't you want to just watch it all burn? And I said, not really. And they're like, well, what I was thinking about 9-11. And if that really was perpetrated by someone other than who we think it was, or even even if, if there was more involvement than what we were told, that they're like, how many people can we kill and destroy in order to get a war going so that we can start profiting in the Middle East? So it's, it's beyond that. And I think when we talk about a larger spiritual energetic war, I think there's more reality to this that's very hard to quantify in words because there are individuals in our society, just like the new uh, science advisor in the, in, the, in the Biden administration that literally takes all of his human liquids and writes demonic words on walls with them what? in order to summon demons and does things like yeah, spirit cooking Wait, uh, who's with doing Abrima, that? Abrovimich Podesta. Uh, Podesta oh, 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 uh, Tony yeah, Podesta? Yeah. That's John's brother. He's pretty crazy, I've heard. Yeah, there's John Podesta that, of course, does you know my spirit favorite, cooking. My favorite meme paintings. was the uh, police sketch of the people who kidnapped that little girl. And it just, you've you not seen this? Oh, yeah, I've seen this. It. Yeah, the police sketch of like, here's the pe pe uh, people of interest in the, in the case of this missing young girl, and it, and it looks just like the Podesta brothers. <laughs> yes, exactly <laughs> yes. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's the, the, even a mole on the face. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, that's weird. Yeah, Tony, John's brother, John just got tapped for Biden's, what is he, what's his position now in the Biden administration? John's in there now. Ooh, really? You remember yeah, what's, what, what Andrew Breitbart brother. said? What did you say? You About guys don't guys? know? No. You guys don't, don't know remember. what Breitbart said? Yeah. About Podesta? Uh-huh. But oh, Tony, yeah. Tony has been known to be like a wild, wild one. Like, yes. And that's John's well, brother. Painting, you can't control what your brother does, but that's still like, you know, I don't know how connected They have John a consulting group that, of course, works. Andrew Breitbart tweeted February 4th, 2011, how prog guru John Podesta isn't a household name as world-class underage sex slave op cover-upper defending unspeakable dregs escapes me. Oh my. Wow. That's a lot. Very crazy thing for a man to say. That's I like thing, man. Back in the day when no one knew who Podesta was. When you're right. connected to the Secretary of State like he was with Hillary, you've got access to all the information of what's going on. He might have known if Tony was doing stuff and like, what do you get? It's his brother. So like, well, do you have your brother arrested? I mean, in a just society, yes, but in a nepotistic thing, you you know, we see maybe not. Well, they, they ran a consulting group together that worked with a lot of foreign governments, that worked with Saudi Arabia, that worked with a lot of despots. Um, and uh, if you look at the, the work that they've done, it's, it's really kind of scary and eye-opening how much influence that they had. They were pretty much the right-hand man for Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. And uh, those are some dirty hands to have. John Podesta was? Yeah, uh, yes, John Podesta, Podesta specifically. I, I interviewed John Podesta uh, before. Uh, he's also big into aliens and UFOs. Lots of weird stuff with him and the paintings and the art that they have. Very weird. We could go down a rabbit hole. That's what if What if the reality is that uh, aliens just, you know, run things? Aliens. And, and, and that's, that explains everything. <laughs> yeah. That's the next false flag, according every, to Eddie Bravo. Every yeah. one of these politicians are aliens. They've been allowed no, 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 to no. stay in this for too long. Not everyone. They're, You're they're, no, no, no. None, none of the politicians are aliens. They're like, lizards? They're no, just getting the they're directions. human beings, and there are aliens who are like, "We run this. You're a chicken coop, and you do as you're told." Yeah. 
And then they've you been, incentivize I don't literally them. believe this. Media matters, mm-hmm. but uh, they've been I'm in gonna... power for too long. I was doing. We we did this thing recently where we we're looking for clips from the 1972 election, and I'm looking at election night uh, footage. And who's who are they talking about? Joe Biden. Yeah. 1972. Oh, yep. Fifty years ago, this guy has been in this. And when you're in uh, D.C. for that long, you understand all the loopholes, all the ins and outs, the positions that you need to make money to to flow money to the big guy, to how to get your family in there and 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 bifurcate uh, you know investigations and what have you. There are smart people that have been in in D.C. for a very long time that have become evil. This is my fun conspiracy theory joke that uh, the answer to Fermi's paradox is that aliens do exist. They did come here. They've taken over. And the reason we're seeing such weird and rapid changes to our culture and society is because the point at which they began is the point at which the aliens showed them and said, all right, we're taking over. You can't stop us. We have laser guns. (laughs) And then the world leaders were like, well, okay, I guess. A good example of um, the fun thought is an episode of Stargate uh, SG-1 where... Uh, for those that are familiar with it. Basically, there's a, p- a planet. It's very advanced. And then the people living there don't realize that they had already been secretly conquered by the the evil alien race or whatever. And so everything seems to be normal, but then they find out actually the government was being run by an invading species or whatever. So, you know, fun, fun, fun conspiracy. Are the aliens things. just having fun with us? No, no. Like, you know, I was thinking, you know, you're, you guys are familiar with Fermi's Paradox. Yes. So what is know, that? That the do- yeah, explain that really quick. So it's basically if if the universe is so vast and expansive, then alien life surely must exist. And if so, why haven't we encountered it? Here are the potential theories or hypotheses as to why we have encountered intelligent life. And there's things like the Great Filter, which is that any sufficiently intelligent life eventually wipes itself out. There's um, I forgot I forgot what some of the names of these are, but some of them are that suns basically bursting beforehand. Uh, you know, uh, cataclysmic events that take out. Well, that's that's basically the great filter. Like the life yes. gets wiped out. But there's also things like um, the universe is so big and so vast that life never appears at the same time as each other, and or it's or it's so incredibly rare. Uh, so there's a bunch of different different ideas. And my my hypothetical answer is that uh, aliens are abundant, and considering the size and scope of the universe mastering massive uh, uh, hyper hyperspeed travel and uh, we're a bunch of monkeys on a on a small primitive planet and so they are our chicken coop i don't see why aliens would have to be our size i could imagine that they're larger than our solar or system smaller. yeah or, or smaller. smaller yeah and and we're we're beasts of burden <laughs> You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. They need they need specialists with with digits that can you know build little hardware and stuff for them. So, so yeah. it sounds like you what know? you're saying because there was the one of the biggest and earliest uh, media hoaxes was in the early 1800s where they I think it was the New York Sun did an article on the moon having uh, Batman. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it was great. huge. They did like all of these stories on it, it and, and they cited some some London uh, study on, and to, to validate this. So it, it sounds to me like what you're saying is, is that story was actually not a hoax. That something oh, I'm actually... just kidding, though. <laughs> like, I think the reality is corrupt people do corrupt things and mm. burn everything to the ground. Like, we're tracking uh, like the Roman Empire. You know, it's, it's, it's similar. And so we can look to history and say, hey, hey things like this just happen. You know, I was thinking today, would you let yourself die to make everyone else's life better? Do you think would you, you like could... today? I, I have a hard time saying yes to that because I'm like those people. What did they do for me? What do I but like? We're the collective you personal. If you said, OK, this family member, this dot, your daughter, or your wife for a second. I've actually seen a video on this recently where they basically asked women that question. Would you die for your husband or for your boyfriend? And to a T, I know it's edited, so maybe they didn't all say that, but every single one of them said, no, I would not. And the man really? says They yes. asked the men, and all of the men said yes. Well, come would. on. Look, I got chickens outside. And if a fox is lurking up, the rooster will run full speed, sacrificing its life to save the hens. And the hens will all go run to safety. And yep. He'll die. Yeah. Mm. That's just the way nature is, man. That's it why is. it's what it is. I got a question, though. Do you guys think that if you knew the, the collapse of the Roman Empire was coming, would you as an individual be able to have stopped it? No, I don't think so. At that period of history, no way. Maybe so, with the well, internet. Hmm. So well, the if question you have a time now, machine and know exactly how everything happens, maybe you could intervene and have some kind of impact on it or delay so. it significantly. I don't think so. I think there's too many things happening at one time. And, you know, if that's the case, 
is the collapse of uh, America inevitable? And no, no action that we could could do is going to change that. But we it always has to start tools. somewhere and then snowball. So if you could go back in time and and stop the snowball, stop the crossing of the Rubicon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it was really stopping exactly. the expansion of the Roman state because it was got so big that the technology couldn't support the infrastructure, and they had to split in half. And then at that point, it was just like just down. Well, I thought there. the twenty twenty election was that kind of that mm -hmm. inflection point where you saw this the entire country burn. And how somebody can vote for the party that created that that uh, chaos was stunning to me. So have we kind of have we crossed that that point where we can't reverse? I I can't think otherwise, but that we can change it and that we have the tools to do it, and that we have the ability to do it because otherwise, you know, we have no hope. No, I, I, I don't. I don't think there's no hope. I think the system is crumbling before us, but it doesn't mean that we're going to suffer. It just means that the world around us will change substantially, and we are going to have to rebuild from the uh, from the ashes. I'm not. I don't see it as a well, bad thing. The people not paying like, attention hey, will suffer. The people who are ignorant oh, sure. and don't know everybody, what's going on will suffer. The everybody watching this show is going to be prepared. all right, I guess, because mm -hmm. they because they bought all of their food at safeandreadymeals.com. <sighs> I think that they do want to put people in pods and link them into the metaverse and somehow extract heat from their body for electricity and like just sedate a large that, population. That's the matrix. I get. I get it, but that doesn't actually work. The extracting heat from your body for energy. Piezoelectric juice. I don't know. I mean, they're going to try and find a way to what harvest is, some what is sort of value. Piezoelectric juice. Piezoelectric <laughs> is worker. Piezoelectric is when you harness vibration to create an electrical current. Okay. So the body's own, like your your bones are made of uh, hydroxyapatite, which is a crystal, a vibrating crystal, for instance. And if you could somehow harness the vibration to get electricity out of it. And like if you're in a fluid that's really sensitive to vibration and you create like a static charge just by being inside of it. Um, I would imagine rather than kill everybody off, they're going to try and extract value from the human body. The environmentalists are going to find some way for that not to be renewable and uh, and argue against it and protest against it. We have we've been having <laughs> renewable things for in, renewable technology and nuclear for thirty forty years, and uh, they, they've been fighting it for uh, for that long as well. Because constantly feeding people is a big weight on the system. And that's what the World Economic Forum is interested in not doing. They want to do that less. That's why they're like, we want to slow the growth of population. And it's a lot of it's because they don't think they, they can feed it properly. So do you think what's happening right now in regards to the, the, you know, the hitting of the supply chain and what have you, do you think it's part of a design? Do you think that it, this is actually something that the World Economic Forum and those kinds of globalist uh, overlords are the ones that are, are causing a lot of this supply chain issue? Yeah, only in that when I think about it, the electricity system, like why are we still on a centralized electricity grid when there are options for localized fusion reactors or, or fission reactors or local power systems like they have in Africa and a lot of places where they, everybody's got solar on the roof, but they've kept us connected to the grid because that's the power structure. They, the city controls if I have electricity or not. So maybe that they're doing that with food too. I don't, that's the only reason why I think that maybe the food's also involved in that. Mm -hmm. Food and electricity, man, if you can control those, you control a nation. So is, is, is the reality that there is no great crisis, but they're manufacturing it all so that they can centralize and control the human population? No. Scarcity they, yeah. wobbly. The way they reacted to COVID was insane. They was gave nuts. us the two weeks to slow the spread. But then when we realized people's eyes weren't bleeding like we thought, we where was the spread was done? Like, we, we okay, let's open it back up now. Mm -hmm. But instead, they went the other direction. We fought a civil war with smallpox that had a death rate of 40%. And we fought through it. We didn't like stop everything. We didn't like say, okay, you know, we gotta, we have to slow, bend the curve on this. Things kept going. People kept doing what they were doing. Uh, but in, in this sense, I mean, it was like we allowed communism to seep right into. The, how many people would we have allowed to enter into the the force and die to fight communism from coming into the United States? How many Americans would we said, okay, that's worth it to stop Chinese communism from coming into the United States? 100,000, 200,000, 5 million. We allowed it to come in through this pandemic. It just seep, came right in and we all just put a mask on our face and stayed in home. And it was the, it was the most brilliant execution. If you're, a theorist, uh, if you're a conspiracy theorist, it was the most brilliant execution to bring communism and to do a test run on it than it, the pandemic was. Klaus Schwab wrote a book called COVID-19, The Great Reset. Like mm. he conflated the two things. What do those have anything to do with each other unless he wants to make them well, he, connected? He, he talks about it. He says that this is our opportunity to enact the Great Reset. Did you see that they ran that that simulation in 2019 about what to do if there was a global pandemic? Do you get Event 301. Event 301. Yeah. Like they were ready for it. 
like yeah. really, really ready for it I right think before it happens. Constantly happened. ready for crises because I, I think they understand that's when they can make cultural moves. That's when they can make these huge, sweeping cultural changes. Is they're waiting for a crisis. If they can't make, if the crisis doesn't come, they manufacture it, and um, and they take advantage of those moments. It's you see it throughout history. Every time these crises come along, they try to make these moves and they try to make these cultural changes. And I think that uh, the yeah. COVID. Was that perfect example? And, and I think it's multi layered. I, I think it's not just COVID. I think the plan even is, is even bigger uh, than that because when, when COVID first hit, I was just screaming on my YouTube channel, hey, the economy is going to get hit even way worse than this. And I think they calculated this because they deliberately shut down small mom and pop businesses. They allowed Walmart to be open. Grandma down the street had cops bang down, uh, bust down her door, shut down her business because she dared to even be open when she was running an online business. Having that kind of activity absolutely destroyed the middle class, the working class. And I think this was deliberate. I think a lot of the scarcity is artificial. And I think when you have scarcity, you're able to have control over populations. And I think right now when it comes to the food sector, the energy sector, we're seeing deliberate compromises of those systems in order to bring in more control for the ruling party. That's just my own personal opinion and perspective from how I've been seeing it and where things are going. Ever since I learned about, I was I worked at Ground Zero over nine on nine eleven. I actually worked in the American Express building across the street from the pile from like October to G, uh, December, and I would sit in this blown out building, explode. The walls were blown out, the windows were blown out. I was like, I guess when a building falls, all the surrounding buildings windows get blown out. Then later I start to find out, oh maybe maybe there's more concussive forces at play. You start to look, the way they butchered National Institute of Standards and Technology butchered the the. The investigation into that thing and just shipped off the, the the steel to China. They didn't invest. And then oh, there's all these like scientists and engineers come out and say, well, there was trace amounts of nano thermite found in the dust. You look at the buildings fall. They're falling in near free fall, which indicates a demolition. But this silence, the radio silence on this makes me think that people are complicit. I don't know what else to think. I don't know who, but but it doesn't. That wouldn't just happen on accident. You've got to, we're detectives, man. We've got the CIA. What look into this. What, why did those things seem to fall in your free fall speed? I want- it, it is. It is a. I've, I've seen so many. I haven't gotten dug deep down into that world. I, I almost oh, feel like it's Ian, a. Ian. It's simple, as they explained. <laughs> when the fires weakened the steel, it, the <laughs> yeah. weight of the upper floors caused it to pancake, creating an exponential increase in force. When the floor hits another floor, it goes. Yeah. Then, so you would so, expect to see the pancaking, but that doesn't happen. The whole thing just falls. Well, you you wouldn't. From all the debris and all, so you you can actually you you can. There's blasts coming out of the windows, and it's funny because people are like, "Aha, those are explosions," and like, or it's the pressure. When the firemen are like, "There's a bombs going off on the building, pop, 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 all the way up," and you're like, "What are they talking about?" So bombs I, 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 I gotta, I gotta well, you. This is what I don't like about conspiracy theories. When news reports came out on the day, and it was a lot of conjecture and confusion, and no one knew what was going on. The conspiracy theorists tend to take that and go, wow, that proves something else happened. And I'm like, or it proves that you had no idea what the hell was going on. Unfortunately, I cannot prove what happened. Well, That's a, not my goal. There's a great group called the Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, and they garnered uh, thousands of professionals in the field, and they break it down more scientifically, and they explain things uh, through logic, science, and data, uh, while, of course, NIST and all these other government officials have been hiding a lot of the data and not highlighting it to them. I just, I just want to make one point on this, because... You know, we're not. We're, I don't think we're going to be able to tackle this. Maybe, maybe we'll talk about it in the after show. Actually, we'll go in real great detail. I have a conspiracy theory. You guys want to hear it? Oh yeah. Tell During us. the construction of the World Trade Towers, we're in a, we're a country that operates on uh, the lowest bidder. So there's a famous quote. I can't remember which astronaut said this. They said, "What was going through your mind before that rocket went off into space?" And he said that it was built by the lowest bidder. <laughs> so I imagine this. You know, it's a point I make to a lot of conspiracy theorists because people will say stuff they, they think like 9/11 was an inside job or something, and I say, "Okay, I, I hear you. Why choose that conspiracy theory over the other conspiracy theory? That in the 70s when they were building this, a construction company, the Port Authority, whatever, they said we can build this for X million dollars, and they were like, "Wow, that's cheaper than the other guy. The project is yours." Then the VP, you know, goes to the CFO and he's like, are you nuts? We can't build this structure this big for that price. And goes, eh, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll, we'll skimp on this, the stresses in the center. A plane's never going to hit this building. And so they rip off 30 million from the budget so they can get the job done. And then when it gets hit, it falls. Granted, I, I, I know there's a, there's a lot of interesting things we'll talk about, but I'll put it this way. I think... Uh, People will choose their their end result instead of starting from the questions and then trying to understand what happened. 
And that's the issue I take with it. I got no issue of, I'll tell you this. First and foremost, 9-11, it was a conspiracy. Either you believe it was a conspiracy between, you know, these, these Saudi nationals, these Egyptians, and these men to, to commit this act, or you think it was government actors, or at the very least, they knew it was coming and didn't care. Either way, a conspiracy occurred that day. From that point, we should start asking questions about what happened, why did it happen, how did it happen? Unfortunately, we have two camps that have, I'm not saying only two camps, but we have two dominant camps. One saying, we know what happened, the other saying, we know what happened. And I'm kind of like, the reality is the government's not going to tell you what's going to happen. There's no way the government would ever tell you the truth about 9-11. No sane, rational person would believe it. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.